we are going to uh, continue our work on perspective today by reading a short story by a guy named Edward Hawk. Um, and the short story is called Zoo. So I want, um, I want you to consider while we're reading um, what this has to do with perspective. I am going to stop you periodically. Um, periodically just means throughout randomly. It's not random, but. Um, and I'm going to ask you questions that I would like you to write answers to. And when we get to the end, there's one question that I really want you to take some time and think about and include evidence and things like that. So this story is called Zoo, and it is by Edward Hawk. The children were always good during the month of August, especially when it began to get near the 23rd. It was on this day that the great silver spaceship carrying Professor Hugo's interplanetary zoo settled down for its annual six-hour visit to the Chicago area. All right, so I want you to stop here, and I want you to take some time to answer this question. Um, it says the children were always good during the month of August. So what children are being talked about in this first paragraph? Pause me, and when you're ready to move on in the story, go ahead and press play. Before daybreak, the crowds would form, long lines of children and adults both, each one clutching his or her dollar, and waiting with wonderment to see what race of strange creatures the professor had brought this year. In the past, they had sometimes been treated to three-legged creatures from Venus, or tall, thin men from Mars, or even snake-like horrors from somewhere more distant. This year, as the great round ship settled slowly to Earth in the huge Tri-City parking area just outside of Chicago, they watched with awe as the sides slowly slid up to reveal the familiar barred cages. In them were some wild breed of nightmare. Small, horse-like animals that moved with quick, jerking motions and constantly chattered in a high-pitched tongue. The citizens of Earth clustered around as Professor Hugo's crew quickly collected the waiting dollars, and soon the good professor himself made an appearance, wearing his many-colored rainbow cape and top hat. Peoples of Earth, he called into his microphone. The crowd's noise died down and he continued. Peoples of Earth, this year you see a real treat for your single dollar. The little-known horse spider people of Khan brought to you across a million miles of space at great expense. Gather around, see them, study them, listen to them, tell your friends about them. But hurry, my ship can remain here only six hours. Okay, I want you to take a second and answer this question. How do the people of Earth feel about the creatures of Khan, and how do you know? I want you to take some time to answer that question, and when you're ready to move on, um, press play again. So pause me now, and press play when you're ready. And the crowds slowly filed by at once horrified and fascinated by these strange creatures that looked like horses but ran up the walls of their cages like spiders. This is certainly worth a dollar, one man remarked, hurrying away. I'm going home to get the wife. All day long it went like that until 10 thousand people had filed by the barred cages set into the side of the spaceship. Then, as the six-hour limit ran out, Professor Hugo once more took microphone in hand. We must go now, but we will return next year on this date. And if you enjoyed our zoo this year, phone your friends in other cities about it. We will land in New York tomorrow and next week on to London, Paris, Rome, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. Then, on to the other worlds. He waved farewell to them, and as the ship rose from the ground, the Earth peoples agreed that this had been the very best zoo yet. All right, I want you to think for a second. What makes this the very best zoo yet? Pause me, and when you're ready to keep going, press play. Some two months and three planets later, the silver ship of Professor Hugo settled at last onto the familiar jagged rocks of Khan and the queer horse spider creatures filed quickly out of their cages. Professor Hugo was there to say a few parting words, and then they scurried away in a hundred different directions, seeking their homes among the rocks. In one, the she-creature was happy to see the return of her mate and offspring. She babbled a greeting in a strange tongue and hurried to embrace them. It was a long time you were gone. Was it good? All right, I want you to pause here and answer this question. How is the interaction between the she-creature and her mate similar to um, interactions you might have seen? Pause me, and when you're ready to keep going, press play. And the he-creature nodded. 
The little one enjoyed it especially. We visited eight worlds and saw many things. The little one ran up the wall of the cave. On the place called Earth, it was the best. The creatures there wear garments over skins, and they walk on two legs. But isn't it dangerous? asked the sheet creature. No, her mate answered. There are bars to protect us from them. We remain right in the ship. Next time you must come with us. It is well worth the 19 comics it costs. And the little one nodded. It was the very best zoo ever. All right, I got a couple of questions, um, three actually. The first one that I want you to pause and answer is, why is this ending surprising? Go ahead and pause me and press play when you're ready to move on to the next question. Okay, the second question, what perspective do we see at the end of this story? So what or whose perspective do we see at the end? Pause me, and when you're ready to move on to the third and final question, press play. Okay, this is the question where I want you to take some time, um, look for evidence from the text, and I want you to write at least a full paragraph. I'd say you're gonna need four to six sentences, including your quotes, to really prove this, uh, really make your case for this one, okay? So I'm gonna say this one twice. How and why did the author use dialogue to develop this change in perspective? i say it again. How and why did the author use dialogue to develop this change in perspective? All right, when you're done, um, you're done for today uh, with this lesson. So have a really good rest of your day, and I can't wait to go ahead and read some more texts with you tomorrow.